Ladies and gentlemen, people at Madoc Fair, it's your local community news reporter. Diane Sherman here and I am pleased to see our fire department. I am pleased to see our agricultural society working hard in the booth. Pretty soon you're going to have some horse draws. But right now, if you remember the history of Madoc, Madoc was the village of the Massasauga and the Iroquois. Today we are pleased to have invited for your historical pleasure, the White Pine Dancers from the Bancroft, uh, from the Brantford area of Mississauga New Credit. Front is going to be a grass dancer. He's going to show you some of the traditions of the dance. It's light. It's not a warrior dance. It's a grass dancer, full of life. This is Dan Secord down front. To host the event is Aaron Bell with a broken microphone. Is Aaron Bell who will be supplying some music in a rather improvised way because he couldn't get all his equipment set up, but that's okay. Aaron, I want to thank you for coming. Don, thank you very much. People, please enjoy. Sago, Scano, Ani, hi. I just greeted you in three native languages. The first native language that I greeted you in was Mohawk. The way you say hello in Mohawk is you say Sago. So first me, then all of you, Sago. That's good. Second native language that I greeted you in was Cayuga. The way you say hello in Cayuga is you say Scano. So first me, then all of you, Scano. That's good. Third native language that I greeted you in was mine and Dan language. We are Ojibwe Nation. The way you say hello in our language is you say Ani. So first me, then all of you. Ani. Ani. That's good. The way you guys say hello is you say. Ani. I'd like to say many thank you for running For thousands of years, our people have lived upon this place. You call this land North America. We call this land Turtle Island. For our people, every living thing upon this place has a living spirit. Each blade of grass, each drop of rain, each tree, each animal, each wind has a living spirit. Everything that we do within our culture is honoring these things. When we look at ourselves, we don't look at ourselves as being at the top of the food chain. We look at ourselves as being at the bottom because we need everything else above us in order for our children's children's children to survive. One of the first things that is taught to our children is the skill of listening. Our children are always taught from a very young age that anyone who's older than you was considered a teacher. Anyone who was younger than you, it was your job to guide along the right path in life. So everything within our society was geared towards sharing proper respect for everything that is around us. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce Dan Secor from the Mississauga Nation of New Credit. Yay! <laughs> Usually we come out with about four or five other different dancers and performers, but we have just Dan and myself, so we're going to do as best as we can for you. We left this morning at approximately 6.30 in the morning, and it took us three and a half hours on the concrete path you know as Highway 403 and 401 in order for us to be here today. Dan is going to share with you a medicine dance known as the grass dance. That is the regalia that Dan is wearing right now. We never call what we wear costumes costumes because costumes are something that you wear in Halloween to hide who you are. We call them regalia to enhance who we are. That's first Dan is wearing bells around his ankles, which he uses to draw in the ancestors, both past and present, to join him within the circle as he dances. Going fringes upon that regalia, which represents the tall prairie grasses that still do grow west to this day on his head. He's wearing a roach headdress, which is made from two different types of animals. The soft underbelly fur, the porcupine, and the white-tailed deer. He also has two eagle feathers in the top of his roach headdress. This is meant to stir the medicine within the circle, and also represents the fact that he or members of his family have been in battle before. Still to this day, as well as long ago, grass dancers, their job was to stomp down the tall prairie grasses in preparation for a new village or a new celebration ahead. So that when the grass is still there after we leave, the grass can regrow in our place. One of the forms that we always give prayers is a form of dancing. This is why we always share this dance before we go into our performances. 
we always like to share proper give thanks. I'm going to be using my traditional cell phone for our music. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the grass dance. Shirts, hats, gloves, and boots. In our homes, we have two 50 inch plasma TVs. We have high speed internet. In my house, I have PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Wii, Nintendo Wii U. I have one son, his name is Jack, he stands this big. And I have one cat, his name is Coco Bean, he stands this big. So, in other words, our people live our lives just like you do. But just like you do, when you go home from work or school, you follow along with your own family's culture and traditions. Most of your ancestors have only been in this land 400 years. Our ancestors have been in this land for 22,000 years. And this is one of the things that we're always trying to pass down to the next generations to come. The decisions that we make today are not for the next generation. They're supposed to be for the seventh generation into the future. So things that we positively have to think about today have to positively affect our great, 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 great grandchildren. I'm going to introduce Dan. Dan's going to share with you a few words and a few teachings from his own culture. Hello, Ani. Hi, how's everyone doing today? Good. I'll just introduce myself uh, to you in my language uh, and uh, express my greetings. Asina Nene, Indigenous Cox, Makwan Dora, Pashinagane, Indon Juba, Sasaga and Dao, Indigenous Abe and Dao, Ani Kinuaya, Big Rich. Say uh, welcome to everyone, and I greeted you in my language. Introduced myself as Asinanene, and I'm of the Bear Dota, and Anishinaabe of Sasaka And some of the dances usually you'll see. One of the first ones is the grass dance. Uh, we did a short exhibition. It was kind of difficult to see, depending on where you were around the stage. Um, it's a very old dance. Uh, we have songs and dances for uh, virtually everything. That dance is a very old dance, and that version we received from the Winnebago or Ho Chunk people from the Omaha people. And, uh, the regalia you see is, is a grass dance regalia. The reason why it looks very different is because uh, for our contest dancing and our travels, we use a lot of modern materials for our contest dancing. We also have our traditional uh, clothing or regalia for our special events and ceremonies. Um, 
that there's different styles. There's men's traditional, which is usually made uh, from natural materials, with the older style of dress. Uh, grass dance, you see the ribbon on there. There used to be uh, bundles of grass, and later they switched that to yarn and then ribbon and so forth. Um, they used to wear that around their belt. Um, there's also another style, Men's Fancy, which is the most contemporary of our dances. And that style incorporates um, many modern forms and traditional forms of dance. So uh, for now, what I'll do is I'll turn the mic over to Aaron. And he'll say a few words. So miigwech, miigwech, keep us in the way. Thank you for listening. Here in farm country, I've heard that uh, duct tape fixes everything. Well, this, this is First Nations duct tape. This is what I'm using to hold my mic stand together. This is sinew. It comes from every living elder brother animal upon the land. What we used to do is we used to take the sinew from the animal and we used to wrap it in, in beeswax. And that's what makes it nice and sticky and also makes it nice and strong. So this stuff actually okay, works still to this day. In fact, in my house, when my washer broke, I used this to fix the back of my washer to put it all back together. To put it all back together. Next, Clarence Tracy, to finish this round. We're going to pull the bolt back first. So I'm just going to give you a short brief and, uh, uh, history of the uh, Iroquois people, which is just down here, Bay of Kinti and Tayandanega. We have a thing known as a creation story. Normally this creation story would take about five days to share within Longhouse. So I'm going to very condense it down for you very, very quickly. So our people used to live in a place called Sky World, which is up above the clouds that we see in the air to this day. Within Sky World, there's a great village. In this village, there was a great chief. He had a very beautiful wife whose name was Sky Woman. In this village, there was a great tree of life. It was known as a white pine tree. This is one of the reasons why we call ourselves white pine. Because amongst the Iroquois people, white pine trees are a symbol of peace, friendship, and respect. This white pine tree was uprooted. And when this white pine tree was uprooted, there was a great hole within the Sky World. Sky Woman came to the soul, and she was very bountiful with child. Sky Woman came to the soul, and she fell through. Now she was falling from this hole in the sky. There was a flock of geese flying along the surface of the oceans. Chief of the geese looked up and saw Sky Woman falling, noticed that Sky Woman did not have any webbed hands or webbed feet or feathers. So the chief of the geese led his people up into the air, and Sky Woman landed upon the backs of their wings. The geese led Sky Woman down to the oceans, and at this time the earth was covered in nothing but vast amounts of water. Chief of the geese realized that Sky Woman did not have any webbed feet. Chief of the geese realized Sky Woman needed a place to stand. Chief of the geese called upon the great turtle to rise up out of the waters, and Sky Woman was placed upon his great back. When she was falling from Sky World, she grabbed onto the roots of the Tree of Life. She still had them in her hand, and she knew that if she could replant these roots, she would have enough food for her and her unborn child. She asked the great turtle if he knew of any place where there was any earth where she could replant these roots. The great turtle replied that he had heard that there's earth at the bottoms of the deep waters upon which we live. Great Turtle called upon three of his strongest friends to come down and help him. Out of the bright blue sky, down flies Loon. Up swims Beaver, and up hot Muskrat. On to Turtle's back. Loon is known amongst our people as being a very loud and arrogant bird. And when he wants his voice to be heard, he sticks out his chest and wiggles his wings. And this is what Loon did. He stuck out his chest and says that I strong flyer. I am a strong fisherman. I will fly high into the sky and dive down deep into the oceans and reach for you the earth that you and your unborn child so desperately need. And with that, Loon rose up into the skies, arched his back, and dove into those waters. When he hit those waters, those waters split for him because when Loon dives, he always dives on an angle. He does not make a splash. This is how our people learned how to spearfish, by watching Loon and the shape of his body right before he hits that water. This is why we shape the flint that goes on the ends of our spears into the shape of Loon's body. Loon swam and he swam so far and so deep the waters lost all their light and all their color. With Loon's last gasping breath, he reached out his two front wingtips to touch that earth, but he touched nothing, and he floated his way to the surface of the oceans far, far up above. Once there, he apologized to Sky Woman, and Sky Woman turned to Loon and thanked him for his gifts of flight and of fishing. Some of her and her unborn child are in need of fish okay, for their tables. They'll remember this day, and they'll remember the gifts of the Loon.
Next, the sky woman turned to Beaver, and Beaver said that I am not a strong flyer like Loon, but I spend all of my days in these waters, and therefore I am a very powerful swimmer. I will dive down deep into the oceans and reach for you the earth that you and your unborn child so desperately need. And with that, Beaver slammed his tail upon the water and dove beneath the waves. He swam and he swam so far that the waters lost all their light and all their color. Beaver's last gasping breath, he reached out his two front beaver paws, but again he touched nothing, and he floated his way to the surface of the ocean. Once there, he apologized to Sky Woman, and Sky Woman turned to Beaver and thanked him for his gifts of swimming and lodge buildings. They've never heard her unborn child or need of a roof over their heads. They'll remember this day, and they'll remember the gifts of the beaver. Next, Sky Woman turned to Muskrat, and Muskrat is not a very large animal but his fur is made in a very special way by the Creator. When it's dry, his fur is separated like the fingers of my hand, but when it starts to rain or muskrat jumps into the waters, those fur closes up, and no water touches his skin. Therefore, muskrat is waterproof. Muskrat says that I am not a strong flyer like Loon, and I am not a strong swimmer like Beaver, but I have a large heart and a determined mind. I will dive down deep into the oceans and reach for you the earth that you and your unborn child so desperately need. And with that, Muskrat leapt off Turtle's back and into those waters. Those waters split for Muskrat. He fell so far and so deep, the waters lost all their light and all their color. Muskrat's last gasping breath, he reached out as two from Muskrat paws. But again, he touched nothing. But Muskrat knew that if he failed, Sky Woman and her unborn child may die. Muskrat could not let this happen. Muskrat thought, and he thought, that he made that decision within his heart and in his mind to continue on no matter what the cost. Muskrat fell even deeper into the ocean's depths. Lungs bursting, vision going black and blurry. Muskrat's last dying breath. He reached out and touched that earth held that earth over his heart like this, arched his back so no water could take that earth away from him, and then he floated to the surface of the oceans. Sky Woman was becoming very worried for Muskrat had been down beneath the waves much more longer than Beaver or Loon. When she turned to see where Beaver was, she found, when she turned to see where Muskrat was, she found his lifeless body floating in the oceans, and Sky Woman felt very sad, for she knew that Muskrat had died trying to reach for her the things that she so needed. She lifted Muskrat's body out of the waters, laid him flat upon the turtle's back, and when she opened up his paws, they got his spirit back to the sky world, and that's when she found the earth that Muskrat had gathered. She took that earth, and she spread it out all over the back of the great turtle, and that turtle grew, and grew, and grew, and grew until it is the size it is today. And this is just a shortened version of the Iroquoian creation story. This is the origin of why we call this land Turtle Island. And the next time you can look at an atlas, and you look at a map of North America, you'll be able to see the turtle beneath the land. We're going to get Dan back out of here. He's going to share with you another dance. Which one do you want to do? Uh, and as you watch Dan's body throughout this song, you'll see that during certain points within the song, Dan is going to duck and move out of the way of any projectiles coming towards him.
Um, sure, a song with you. And this is the song I'm going to share is what they call uh, a straight song. There are different types of songs. There's songs with words in our language, and then there's uh, songs with no words. And they're like uh, like sounds that carry the melody, like do I do 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 do, like that sort of thing. Um, they're both very important. We both have sacred songs, ceremonial songs, nice. social songs, good words, and stuff. And uh, but for today, we're gonna share a okay, we what they call an intertribal song, now or a song that anybody can get up now. and dance to. First up, we'll be Miss and, Fuller um, from and it's usually Amelia's summer, birth no with Abby and Willie. Hopefully and on deck, we'll be Blaine Way with Jerry and Clark.